Hello travelers, I'm Chris. Welcome to Lorespire. Today we have a build video for Drist Doarden, beloved Dark Elf character uh, created by R.A. Salvatore. Um, we had a viewer, Full Metal, who was looking for a, a build for Drist, and uh, I remembered reading the books whenever I was younger, and it was a character that I definitely liked whenever I was younger. Um, and I thought it would be cool to go ahead and make a build for it. Uh, so I have. As you can see here, we have Guinevar and we have Dritzt, and uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, what this build entails. Now, it's not meant to be a solo build. I'm just kind of soloing around here to uh, give the an idea of what it's capable of in combat, but it's definitely not uh, meant to be a solo build, even though it's capable in combat of soloing quite a bit on uh, uh, core difficulty. That's what setting we have here. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at how to uh, build the character out from the character creation screen. Okay, so this is what Drist is going to look like at uh, level 20, Mythic Rank 9. Okay, uh, we already knew that we took two weapon fighting there, and then the rest of the feats uh, in order would be Blind Fight at level 3, Boon Companion at level 5, uh, outflank at level 7, combat reflexes, seize the moment, improved critical, improved, improved critical, improved, improved, improved critical, and improved, improved, improved critical, improved. Uh, and then down here for the um, the bonus feats that he gets from his class, or combat style feats rather, we're taking dodge, improved two-weapon fighting, greater two-weapon fighting, uh, skill-focused athletics, and uh, double slice. Okay, and uh, for the favorite enemies, uh, we're going to actually switch to uh, favorite enemies, demons of strength, starting at level five. And every time that you you uh, choose a new favorite enemy, you'll choose demons of strength. From then on, and if you have to pick a secondary, then you'll choose demons of slaughter. Okay, because demons of strength, at least in my opinion, become much more prevalent and more difficult to fight than Demons of Slaughter, you know, once you start getting to, like, the early mid-game. Uh, so that's why I, I kind of ramped up the favorite enemy, um, Demons of, uh, Strength. And then after that, you can go with Demons of Magic, just because you run into more of those than any other, uh, class type. And I went with Favorite Enemy Undead next after that, just be you believe, after the uh, demons, and then I went with uh, favorite enemy outsiders here at the very, very end. Okay, so favorite enemy demons of slaughter, um, demons of strength, demons of magic, and then at the very end, just because you have to choose something, uh, you're looking at favorite enemy undead and outsiders. Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much everything we're going to, to do there. Now, I realize that 20 levels in ranger might be a little... Uh, controversial or maybe a little lackluster in some people's opinion uh, but I felt like Guinevar really needed to be a big part of it and so we need to stick with a pet class and yeah we're already a ranger so anyways that's why I did that now we did take um, we did take uh, Trickster as our mythic path and this I think is kind of the more controversial choice um, if you wanted to go Legend, I feel like Legend would be a really good choice for Drist. Um, and could arguably make more sense than Trickster. Ultimately, I decided to go with Trickster just because the, some of the tricks, like the Mobility trick and the Athletics trick, uh, I felt like fit him really, really extremely well. Especially the Mobility trick. And uh, getting all the extra uh, Mythic abilities and, and stuff by... Uh, staying on a mythic path is also really, really helpful. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's why we went ahead and went with Trickster. The only thing that I don't like about taking Trickster is that you have the ridiculous looking mask over your character whenever you look at them on the character screen, which kind of sucks, but, uh, oh well. I feel like everything else actually fits, uh, fits pretty well. Uh, it also gives you access to all the increased, uh, critical feats. Uh, which I feel like uh, fit the uh, Drist uh, character build very, very, very well. Uh, so anyways, just going over this uh, real quick, the uh, Mythic uh, feats and abilities. 
for Driss Dillard in here. Uh, we're taking Bit of Fun and Last Stand, Mythic Rank 1. And we're taking Two Weapon Fighting, Mythic, at Mythic Rank 2. Mythic Rank 3, we're taking Mythical Beast to, uh, you know, up Guinevar's uh, effectiveness. And Mobility Rank 1, Avoid Attacks of Opportunity and get uh, a 50% increase in, in movement speed during battle. Uh, pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, then at Mythic Rank 4, we've got Perception Ranks 1 and 2 as well as Improved Criticals uh, Mythic Scimitar. Okay, and this right here will allow you to start taking the Improved Improved Critical Feet. Um, all the extra ones, which is pretty much what you will take uh, with all of your feet from here on out until you have them all. Um, let's see here. Mythic Rank 5, we have Unrelenting Assault and Athletics Rank 1. Mythic Rank 6, we have Stealth Rank 1 and Athletics Rank 2. Okay, and the athletics, they're just going to help you, um, ranks one and two, that's going to help you avoid, uh, you know, status effects and various negative effects on your character because you will have a high strength and a high uh, athletics um, skill check uh, with this build. And then at Mythic Rank 7, you're going to get Rupture Restraints. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention I've already at Mythic Rank 6 here uh, just to help with more attacks of opportunity. Um, and then here at Mythic Rank 7... We've got uh, Rupture Restraints, Knowledge Arcana Rank 1 Trick, and Athletics Rank 3 Trick. Now, because you have your Athletics maxed, this is actually going to give you another plus 5 um, attack bonus, at which in turn gives you another attack, an additional attack, which is uh, very helpful. And I feel like Drist having as many attacks as possible at the uh, highest modifier possible definitely fits how deadly his character is. Um, and, and all of the books and lore. So, um, yeah, that's why we went ahead with that. Uh, Mythic Rank 8, we have Mobility Rank 2 and Knowledge World Rank 1, as well as Dodge Mythic. Um, feel like Dodge and Dodge Mythic, even though they're not super effective, they just fit what the character is supposed to be, which is extremely agile and, um, you know, hard to, uh, hard to hit there. Now, Mythic Rank 9... Uh, I did go ahead and take Abundant Casting just because on a Ranger that gives you, um, that covers three quarters of your spells. You know, one rank in Abundant Casting. There also weren't a whole lot of other good choices at this point, in my opinion. Um, and we took Knowledge World rank two. And uh, Lore Nature rank one here. Now the Knowledge World, very nice. It basically gives you another 5% chance to crit. And with all the improved, improved criticals, um... Yeah, that gives you a really, really, really uh, nice uh, chance to crit here. Now here at Mythic Rank 10, uh, whenever you get to that, just go ahead and take whatever you like. You're like five minutes from the end of the game anyways. Doesn't really matter too much, uh, to be perfectly honest. Now, uh, coming over here, if we look... I just want to look real quick. Uh, we've got an 11 to 20 crit range using scimitars and with all these improved critical feats, which is freaking awesome. Um, and whenever you actually add in the uh, knowledge world feat, because that doesn't show here, but if you roll a 1, it also becomes a 20, which is also a crit. So you actually really effectively, for all practical intents and purposes, have a 10 to 20 um, crit uh, critical threat range, uh, which is awesome. And then you add uh, Blessed Weapon on top of that, uh, which I do suggest having a Paladin in the party or just having a bunch of Blessed Weapon scrolls if you don't have a Paladin in your party. Uh, then you're going to auto-confirm all these crits, um, which is going to just give you hella crits, which is uh, definitely extremely helpful and what I feel like uh, Drist would be all about. Now, you can see we only have plus 38 to our attack, which is not great, which is why I'm only recommending this for core difficulty. You can actually get that much higher, much, much higher with things like uh, like uh, haste oh, and uh, buffs from specific classes like the uh, incense synthesizer or, um, you know, scalds especially. You know, you can get like another plus seven or nine. I think uh, with a, a well-built Scald in your party. Uh, and then there are just other buffs that you can get as well. As you can see here, we're not very heavy on buffs. Um, so, yeah, if we had some uh, like heroic invocation going on, that would add to it. And just some various things. 
Um, but we don't have that since we're just kind of soloing right now. Uh, but anyways, I just wanted to point that out. Even at plus 38, it's still effective on core difficulty, but you should be able to get that up to with, with buffs and a full party. You ought to be able to get that up to like plus 50 or so um, without too much issue. All right, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for uh, Dritz and how Dritz is built. Uh, just looking at Guinevar here real quick, I'll just go over uh, go over this. Uh, for the feats, we've got Iron Will, Blind Fight, Improved Iron Will, Outflank, Combat Reflexes, Seize the Moment, and then uh, all of the improved and improved improved critical feats um, for a claw attacks since Guinevar gets four claw attacks. Uh, you know, per uh, per round. And then we just went with the base animal companion here, just because uh, evasion is so good and so necessary, especially late game. And then uh, you also get the multi-attack um, with it. And devotion is also pretty helpful, especially like in the uh, the mid-game time. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's that's what we did with Guinevar, and we did go with a black Smilodon or thought I did. Maybe I didn't go with the black Smilodon, but I should... No, I did. Okay, I did. It just doesn't show here. Like, I thought I did. Um, so anyways, yeah, that's that's pretty much all we did there. The gear that we have on is extremely basic. Uh, stuff that pretty much everybody's going to find in every playthrough. We're just using basic plus four scimitars. Very, very basic uh, gear. I mean, we do have a plus six cloak and a plus six uh, headband to mental perfection. Uh, but even those two things are, are pretty basic and easy to find uh, here in Act 5. And uh, anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you thought of the build down below. Let me know how you would change it. feel like Legend is going to be something that uh, that, that we hear a lot. Like, yeah, you should have gone Legend or something like that. And maybe so. Like, I, I feel like uh, there's a good argument to be had for that. But I just, I don't know. I like the, the stuff that you can get with the Trickster and how it uh, fits what I feel like uh, Drist is just a, a little bit more. Um, but yeah, hopefully this uh, helped you out there. Full Metal, sorry it took me so long to uh, to get out. And hopefully uh, some of the rest of you end up playing this. If you do, drop by the stream, drop by the Discord, let me know how the build works out for you. Um, I can tell you it should do pretty well as long as you're playing on core difficulty or below, and it'll probably be all right above that, like even on hard, probably be all right, but uh, it's definitely starting to get less effective. Um, so anyways, yeah, appreciate all of you showing up, and uh, I'll see y'all next time. This has been Chris with Lorespire. Be well, my friends.